Hello there, my fellow devout followers of the Emperor, and welcome back to our overall series concerning the Imperial Inquisition. Now, it has been at least a few weeks since I made the video for this topic, the last one being Inquisitor Tyrus, I believe. Today's video is also gonna focus mainly on another famous Inquisitor, but with the caveat that this one is actually a Lady Inquisitor. Don't let anyone say that we don't have badass women in 40k outside of the Sisters of Battle. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Inquisitor Evixia Danica. I'm also uncertain if it's actually Evixia or Ivixia, but do correct me if I'm wrong. I actually welcome criticism as long as it is constructive and civil. Also, like most famous Inquisitors, there's only a couple of pictures of her, so I'm gonna have to improvise. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Evixia was recruited from one of the Scola Progenium facilities on Elena Mora. She is the daughter of the Imperial Guard Colonel Danica, whose regiment had been seconded to service with Inquisitor Grain of the Ordo Hereticus. Their mission at the time was to investigate the Cardinal of Elena Mora during the so-called Sargosa Schism. The lengthy nature of this examination, in which tens of thousands of witnesses were called to account, necessitated whole swathes of the Cardinal's congregation to be put under armed quarantine. Following the successful persecution of the Cardinal for his apostate teachings, and the prescribed punishment for both him and his world, Colonel Danica's regiment was granted feudal rights over the world. Evixia learned the dangers of apostasy and the solemn duty of an imperial servant, which not even death could end, at her father's knee. She was the most faithful in her devotions to the Emperor and the Ecclesiarchy out of all her fellow pupils. The tales of the executed cardinal's wickedness filled her with a righteous loathing of all things heretical and evil. Such was her fervor in this pious hatred that many believe she would take her vows and become a member of the militant orders of the Adepta Sororitas. But such was not to be. On Evixia's 18th birthday, Inquisitor Covenant appeared at her family's estate and demanded to see the young girl. The colonel obeyed the mysterious figure and allowed him to speak with his daughter. Covenant was convinced that Evixia would make an ideal recruit for his retinue, and began subjecting her to a lengthy series of ordeals to prove her spiritual purity and physical suitability. Evixia passed each one of the tests with ease, but as she continued, an act of base treachery reaching back to the examination of Inquisitor Grain was to come to fruition. The roots of heresy ran deep, and it is rightly said that a weed of corruption can fester even in the purest soil. There had been those who had escaped the initial purges of Colonel Danica's regiment, who had clandestinely continued following the apostate teachings of the planet's former ruler. A network of cults existed throughout the planet, slowly gathering power, until such the time came that they were ready to avenge their master and regain control of the world. As Evixia's tests continued, the Chaos Cultists struck at the one man on Elena Mora who symbolized their defeat, and who they held responsible for the death of their leader, Colonel Danica himself. Infernal pacts were made, blood sacrifices to the ruinous powers, and effigies of the Colonel burned in sacrificial flames. As the Colonel and his family attended their regimental ball, a demon from the darkest regions of the warp manifested in a blazing pyre of blood slaughtering the guests at the party in a frenzy of bloodletting. Schooled in the mystical arts of the Demon Hunter, Covenant was able to hold the demon at bay, but not before it killed the colonel with a sweep of its blade. The body of the colonel burst into flames, immolating in a heartbeat until nothing but a skull remained. At the sight of her father's murder, Evixia screamed at the demon, and the power of her words staggered the monster for the briefest of instants. Covenant took advantage of the demon's brief distraction and renewed his assault. Eventually, he was able to defeat it. In the aftermath of the massacre, Inquisitor Covenant led the purges of the witch cults with Evixia at his side, convinced more than ever that Evixia was the right choice for an acolyte. 
Six months to the day following her father's death, Inquisitor Covenant left Elena Mora with Evixia Danica as the latest acolyte. Recalling the teachings of her father, and because Warhammer 40k is known for being grim dark, Evixia had her father's skull modified by the Lex mechanics of Inquisitor Covenant, and turned it into a weapon carrying servo skull. Talk about your dad having your back even when he's dead. Now her father would stay at her side indefinitely, and continue to serve the Emperor even beyond death. Together, Covenant and Evixia continued to travel around the southern rim of the galaxy, stomping out many blasphemous sects dedicated to the worship of demons and other warp-spawned abominations. Together with a disreputable type who claimed to be an actual duke, Duke von Castellan, they defeated the hedonistic priesthood of the Decagogue of Panefa Varn, and prevented the manifestation of the demon prince Urgolaf the Rancid on Cenariax IV. Evixia learned from her master at an astounding rate, taking on her mentor's puritanical firebrand attitude, brooking no corruption or laxity in her investigations. Soon there was nothing more that Covenant could teach her, and successfully petitioned the conclaves of the Ordos Tempestas for her ascension to full rank Inquisitor. On Simaru Majoris, she would lead a force of inducted guardsmen against the primitive idol-worshipping tribes of the western continent, declaring them Demonicus Frateris. She personally took down the vulgar and profane totem poles at the center of every village. As the crusade continued, the tribes fought back with great ferocity, taking to the mountains and launching brutal hit-and-run attacks on Evixia's units. But axes and javelins were no match for lasers and tanks, and eventually the tribes were driven back to a valley sacred to their people, and began a conjuration to summon the greatest of their gods. This was a creature said to be composed of a mist that could not be harmed and had the power to kill a man with but a glance. At the height of the battle that followed, a scarlet mist poured from the mouth of the tribe's greatest champion and a glittering being, rippling with iridescent color, erupted from the body. Amid the ruin of his flesh, a bull-headed demon of Slanesh was born in the heart of the Imperial Army. The slaughter was terrible, and hundreds of men were killed as they laid down their weapons before the terrible, demonically alluring beast. But Evixia had foreseen such an event, and had a plan in place to defeat any such abominations. Having already unearthed the truth of what the tribes were worshipping, Evixia had requested the aid of the Ordo Malleus. Activating a teleport homer, she called down a squad of Grey Knight Terminators who were waiting in orbit for just such a moment. Together with rallied squads of Imperial Guardsmen, they destroyed the demon and wiped the last remnants of the cults from the face of Simaru Majoris. Their lands were declared Purgatus, and sown with blessed sold that they might not give rise to anything for a hundred years. With the success of the Simaru campaign behind her, Evixia returned to the galactic core, destroying many blasphemous demonic creatures on many different worlds. On Prenau, she joined the defense of the Basilica Dominastrus, and saved the sisters of the Ordo Hospitaller who dwelt there. She also tracked down the instigators of the attack, and recovered the shards of St. Josmane's armor, one of the Basilica's most holy relics, which was stolen in the first days of the battle. In recognition of this deed, the Ecclesiarchy ordered that fragments should be shorn from the armor, and incorporated into a holy weapon to be crafted in her honor. As words of her bravery and purity spread, Evixia was honored at Ophelia IV, with a blessed suit of armor for her efforts in defending the realm of the Emperor. Her strength of purpose and chaste piety attracted many followers along the way, and all of them were of the highest purity. Obviously, Evexia would never tolerate anything less than the same standards she applied to herself in her followers. One such follower she discovered on the world of Charis Kefalon, while on the trail of inquisitors whom she believed were harboring and making use of dreaded demon hosts. She discovered a diminutive, solitary individual known as Jeremiah, sheltering in the mutant ghettos of this troubled world. 
shunned even by the mutants of Garis Kefalon, it soon became apparent to Evixia that Jeremiah was an outcast known in some circles as a pariah or a blank, soulless and loathed by all. But as a consequence to this, Jeremiah was a mighty defense against psychic powers, and thus a hugely valuable addition to a demon hunter's retinue. Despite his reluctance, Jeremiah knew that refusal was not an option, and accompanied the Vixia in her pursuit of the fallen inquisitors. Evixia just missed one such inquisitor at the forge mine complex of Taberna Ostium, and arrived just too late to apprehend another in the blazing ruins of Paganus Ridge. The bullet riddled remains of the town indicated that a fierce battle had occurred here, and upon returning to Kefalon, she was to learn that the fearsome figure of which hunter Tyrus had apprehended her prey at Paganus Ridge. Marching to the witch hunter's lodging, she demanded that Tyrus hand the traitor over to the Ordo Malleus. Naturally, Tyrus refused, stating that the heretic castle would burn in the fires of purgation, but also that one blasphemer had escaped his holy clutches. Furious at Tyrus's refusal to hand over a consorter with the demonic, she attacked his warband, but was soon given a sharp lesson in why Tyrus was such a feared individual throughout the Imperium. Realizing that violence was not the way forward, she again approached Tyrus, this time in the spirit of cooperation. She learned that the escaped rogue inquisitor did indeed traffic with the demonic, and made use of dangerous psychic powers. The Ordo Malleus reserves a special hatred for those of their order who cross the line into demonancy, and none so more than Evixia. Setting off on the trail of this escaped rogue, Evixia and her retinue departed Caris Kefalon, the name of the traitor on their lips, none other than Liechtenstein. Some unique items of war gear that this lady uses include The Anointed Power Halberd of Saint Josmaine Blessed by the Cardinal of Gaffalamore, this holy weapon had sent scores of demons screaming back into the warp. The blade was tempered in the tears of a thousand sisters of the Order of the Ermine Chalice, and contains fragments of the armor of Saint Josmaine himself. The Icon of the Just Carried in a porta shrine on Evixia's back is a rendering of the blessed Saint Josmaine, he whom death could not claim. It is said that a saint touched this icon. The power of faith imbued in this magnificent work of religious art is such that it functions like a force field, protecting its bearer from shooting attacks. Colonel Danica's Skull The skull of Evixia's fallen father was turned into a gun skull, equipped with an auto pistol, in order to continue his service to the Emperor beyond the demise of his mortal coil. Inscribed into Ivexia's armor are the teachings of the Liber Demonicus, powerful purity seals which contain words and symbols hateful to the demonic. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the zealous and strong inquisitor Ivexia Danica for today. Are you familiar with her adventures? Or was this episode the first time you even heard about her? Let us all know what you think about her in the comments below. In case you want to read more on Inquisitor Covenant, who also played a big role in her life, there are two Black Library novels titled Horusian Wars Resurrection and Horusian Wars Incarnation, both written by John French. Was this episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.